Hi everyone, Wonia Tebow here with Buckskin Revolution and I am about to go into town and do a supply run. And you know, I have not been going into town very regularly just for essential missions, but when I do, I am using every possible caution. So I'm gonna show you some of the extra measures I've been taking because right now I am staying with and helping out my 77 year old mother who is in the high risk category and when I have her all settled I am going back to the very rural area that I'm staying right now teeny town with a good friend of mine who is immunocompromised So I am doing everything I can to not be a vector and not bring the virus home to the people that I love So let me walk you through some of the extra measures I have been taking so of course gloves are a no-brainer but the thing with the gloves is that we have to remember that the gloves aren't protecting us they're not keeping us from contacting the virus what they're doing is they're reminding us to be more conscientious conscientious and they're also making it easier for us to sanitize our hands more often without damaging the, the tissue of our hands with harsh alcohols and sanitizers which could crack our hands thus making us more vulnerable. So when I have the gloves on it's going to remind me to be extra cautious around touching things like door handles, light switches, you know, toilets, uh, the keypad on ATM machines or debit card machines when I'm in stores. All of those things that a lot of other people are touching, I want to make sure that I am sanitizing my hands after having touched those. And I also just want to be more conscientious about not touching anything I don't absolutely have to when I'm out and about. Now, I haven't been wearing a mask every time I go out up to now, but the virus is spreading exponentially. I'm going to start wearing this. This is a cloth mask that I brought back from Southeast Asia. So I got this to use for, you know, construction projects so I'm not inhaling dust when I'm sanding and that kind of thing. It is not, you know, made of the materials that are going to be best health rated. So I, again, I'm not going to assume that this mask is protecting me from the virus. If someone was to cough directly to the mask, it would, it would help, it would be an extra line of defense, but it's not, it's not virus proof. However, I'm going to be adding an extra measure of protection to this mask, which is an essential oil blend that I've made specifically that is antibacterial and antiviral. A lot of essential oils have strong antiviral properties. I have another video walking you through making up your own blend and there are blends out there that you can find. A lot of them are called thieves or robbers or mention immunity or fighting things off. So what I am doing is making a sanitizing spray. Now these are hard to find these days, but I found them as natural deodorants. So read the ingredients. A lot of natural deodorants that you find in health food stores or natural food sections of other stores are actually alcohol and water with some essential oils. So what I've done is I've upped the alcohol content by adding some 99% isopropyl alcohol and then I add about 15 drops, you can up it to as much as 20, of my essential oil blend that's going to be adding antiviral properties to the hand sanitizer. And then if I spray down my mask with that, now I've got it coated specifically with antiviral essential oils. So that's going to be adding one more measure of protection. That said, I'm not counting on the mask to keep the virus out. The mask is primarily to remind me not to touch my face because the way the virus enters your body is through your mucous membranes. So that means my eyes, my nose, my mouth. We've already been told don't touch your face and that's great, but the mask is just an added reminder of that. So extra safety precaution. Those things are somewhat being mentioned in terms of precautions. What isn't being talked about is the fact that everything we bring into a store or a public place is potentially contaminated, right? Because say my wallet, my normal wallet is made of buckskin. I'm wearing gloves, but I'm touching things in the store and then I'm touching my wallet to get my card out. And then my ATM card, you know, maybe I'm the only one who's touching it, but when I put it in the machine, it's touching the area that everyone else's ATM card has touched and everyone else is touching their ATM card with their hands. So essentially, once I put it into a machine, it is touching the same thing that hundreds of other hands before me have touched. So it is potentially contaminated. Now, if I put that back into my wallet, 
touching the wallet with my hands, then when I come back into my house, my wallet is a potential source of contamination. And most wallets are absorptive and hard to sterilize. I'm not bringing a wallet to town with me. I am bringing a Ziploc bag into which I have placed my few essentials, ATM cards and my cell phone. And then when I get back to my car, I have in the passenger seat of my car a bottle of 99% rubbing alcohol, but anything over 60% works. And I am dunking my rubber gloves in that so they're nicely saturated, rubbing that rubbing alcohol all over them, and then rubbing down the surface of my bag, my cards, and my phone. That way I know I'm not bringing contaminants from the store into my car with me. Also, when I am out and about, you know, it's not just my face and my gloves that I need to be worried about contacting the virus. The whole surface of my body could have contacted it. Someone could have sneezed or coughed near me and I didn't realize it. Something that I touch might be something that someone who had the virus had touched or I could bump into it with, you know, my back without realizing it. Anything out there could have been coughed on, could have been touched by someone who had the virus. So rather than assuming that my gloves and mask are enough, I'm going to assume that I potentially have virus all over my body. Otherwise, you know, I could have some on the back of my head and when I lay down on my pillow at night, my head is touching that and then I roll over onto my pillow and boom, that virus is right on my mucous membranes. So. Instead, when I come in the door, I'm going to put everything that I brought in from town down on the doorstep. I'm going to spray those down with my sanitizing spray that I keep by the door so that I'm not bringing it in on anything else. And then I'm going to make sure I'm not bringing it in on myself by taking off all of my clothes and putting them right into the washing machine. Normally I wear a lot of buckskin and wool clothing. I'm not doing that right now because I can't just throw those things in the washing machine. I'm wearing cotton clothes or easy wash clothes. And how you take your clothes off makes a difference. So if I just grab the bottom of my shirt and pull it up over my head, then I'm wiping the surface of my clothes right past my mucous membranes. So instead I'm gonna pull them out and lift them up and over my head that way so that they're only the inside of my clothes are touching my face. And even that, ideally, I'm holding them out so those don't even touch my face. And then I'm going to put those clothes right into the washing machine. And then I'm going to hop in the shower and use hot soapy water to make sure I've washed off and killed any of the virus that I might have contacted. These sound like really extreme measures. They're more extreme than what we're being asked of. That said, we have already been asked to do social distancing and, you know, potentially wear gloves and masks. And yet the virus is still spreading rapidly. So extra measures are super important and so important for those of us who are you know young enough that we are not in the high risk categories and i don't know about you but i've been taking on extra errands helping out those people who can't get out themselves so the last thing we want to do is be bringing virus back and putting those people we're trying to help at risk so be well everyone so much more information about wise precautions and ways to keep yourself healthy and well through the coronavirus on my patreon on my website i have a coronavirus resource page on my youtube channel and i'm working on putting out a small ebook with more of these tips recipes patterns for the face mask um, how to make your own hand sanitizer and antiviral essential oils and tinctures so much more coming so thanks so much please subscribe please share widely all we can do to get the good messages out into the world right now is super important so sending love and connection your way it's very important for a healthy immune system to stay upbeat and hopeful and connected in whatever ways we can